Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's a highly anticipated film of the fall season of this year that I've been waiting for for a while and now I finally got a chance to see it. It's also the highest grossing film to date and considered to be the first R-rated film that's based on a DC comic called Joker. Yep, it's a story about a comedian who's also an outsider named Arthur Fleck who's played by Joaquin Phoenix who suddenly descends into insanity and nihilism by becoming a notorious criminal who would soon become as we speak Batman's arch nemesis. Now yes this has a lot of controversy going around too. In fact they refused to play this movie at Aurora Colorado ever since the mass shootings that occurred during the screening of The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, it killed several people by a by a guy with mental illness. You know, he dresses up as Bane and he starts to start a riot. You know, which that shocked the entire nation and and it it was horrible. So they were hoping that this will never happen ever again. And also because, you know, most audience were very afraid because they were hoping this was not going to lit. They were just hoping that this film's not going to link into more mass shootings uh, at several theaters or any other. I mean, they're praying that they won't let this happen. Um, but because of that, uh, well, suddenly everyone else uh, really... Uh, and really admired it so much that they really that it got a lot of praise and I'm happy to hear that because you know they were afraid that this was going to be yet another this is going to cause a lot of chaos now um, after finally seeing the movie because I've seen the trailer which I was very impressed by it I love how they actually blend in with the inspiration of all these Martin Scorsese films that we had, uh, such as um, Taxi Driver, uh, Mean Streets, and even the the King of Comedy, and I could definitely see the uh, the resemblance to it. They they also borrow elements from other films too, from the 70s and 80s. Like there's a bit of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in there too, um, and I think there was also yeah The Man Who Laughs. And then there's also Serpico. So it it's hard to believe. They they really blend it all together for this one particular film that's actually based on a comic book. So But I thought this really worked. And it even inspires uh, the killing joke as well. Because of the fact that yes, it focuses on a character who would soon become the Joker, that he was a stand up comedian and he was coming up with some of the craziest jokes that no one will ever heard but it's just so strange that it could, it could really happen um anyway but it but it's really interesting to see uh, Joaquin Phoenix take this role this is something that I never thought I would see because he's been playing some very peculiar and strange roles in his career such as the film I'm still here, which I have a confession to make. I almost hated that film, actually. <laughs> um, because even though he was playing a basically himself, but given a uh, a full-grown beard and fuzzy hair and and uh, shades, it's like he's just he wants to become a hip-hop artist, you know, changing his um, personality and everything and. It's a documentary of sorts, and the Casey Affleck um, stars and directs. But it just feels like, I don't know, I mean, is this something that I, w I would be interested in? But I guess, it, you know, now that I finally bought it uh, at Dollar Tree, maybe I, I would give this film a chance. And you know what? I would. Probably a lot better than I thought. So... Maybe it's just one of those films that you didn't expect it to see, but then 
next thing you know, you probably change your mind afterwards. Um, but he has done a lot of work over the years. I mean, yes, besides films like 8mm, Return to Paradise, even Signs, for that matter. Um, he also has done films like Two Lovers. He did um, Her, The Master, all of that. And it's it's great to see that you know he's still working and he's still um, playing different roles no matter what it turns out to be. And when I saw him in this movie, I feel like yeah, this is something I never thought I would see. I mean, playing a character who does have an un uncontrollable laugh because of that condition that he has, and then he and then that's when you know he's going to put all that the clown makeup on his face and he's going to end up being what I expected. I mean, the Joker that will always be remembered by. Yeah. So that's what I saw. And I, I hope that he gets... Um, and I'm definitely sure that he's going to get a nomination for this performance because this is where he really nails it completely. And I really hope that it does get... Um, you know, an Oscar, hopefully. Um, but it's already getting nominated for Golden Globes. It's becoming the highest grossing film already, making actually passing the billion mark. And this is the first time that Todd Phillips had ever done a psychological thriller because he usually does comedies like um, Road Trip, Old School, The Hangover films. And I guess after War Dogs, because it's... A, it's a mixture of both, you know, comedy and thriller. I guess he decided to do something completely different, like trying to do something more dramatic this time. And even more dark, disturbing, and violence in, in the mix. So I figured this could actually show, showcase what, what's going on with society that's happening. And that's um, what I was really uh, expecting to see. And I did. So let's get to the review. It stars Joaquin Phoenix, yeah, Robert De Niro, Zazie Beetz uh, from Deadpool 2, Francis Conroy, Brett Cullen, uh, Douglas Hodge, Dante Pereira Olsen, Glenn Fletcher, Lee Gill, Bill Camp, Shea Wickham, Ben Warhelt, and Brian Cullen. And it's written by Todd Phillips along with Scott Silver, based on the comics of the characters by DC, and it's directed by Todd Phillips. The movie begins set in Gotham City somewhere in 1981, the early 80s. We meet Arthur Fleck, played by Joaquin Phoenix, who works as a party clown. He's also an outsider, and he not only that, but he's also the most inspiring stand-up comedian of them all. He lives with his mother, Penny, who happens to be physically and mentally ill, played by Frances Convoy. We also learned that she actually formerly worked with Thomas Wayne, who happens to be the most powerful billionaire of the entire city, and he's also a mayor candidate. And He's played by Brett Cullen. Uh, Gotham City, however, has a class society that, that's filled with crime and unemployment, which leaves all the population disenfranchised and, and polished. We also found out that Arthur suffers from a medical condition that causes him to laugh uncontrollably. Yeah, especially uh, when he was at the bus, you know, during inappropriate times when he was trying to cheer up a a young boy you know by just doing his act and then suddenly he started laughing but then uh, the mother just tells him to stop but then he was about to show um, a card to her that yes he has a condition so that's why he couldn't stop laughing um, it also depends on the social service to actually have medication so that way you know it can control his uh, mentality 
Um, yeah, so during that particular uh, day, uh, there was a gang of delinquents who attacks him you know, while dressing up as a clown and just throwing out the sign. Uh, they beat him up in the alley, even wrecked the sign. So, hoping that his co-worker, Randall, who was played by Glenn Flesher, um, he gave him a gun for protection. Later on, uh, Arthur had invites uh, his neighbor, who happens to be a cynical single mother named Sophie, played by Zazie Beetz, taking them to, you know, taking her to his stand-up comedy show, you know, for his performance, and they began dating with each other. So while entertaining at a children's hospital, suddenly the gun fell out of his pocket, and and pretending like this was a prop that he has, um, he actually got fired from his job because of it. And Randall actually lied that Arthur brought the gun to himself, and so that's exactly what, what happened. And if things didn't get much worse, when he went on the subway, still in his clown suit, he got beaten up by a free drunken businessman who happens to work for Wayne Enterprises. They just insulted um, a female passenger, and then by self-defense, he took out the gun, and shoots two of them, which then he executed the third one. So now they all got murdered. Which then, somehow, some way, you know, there are becoming a lot of reports happening that a clown vigilante is on the loose. They're going around killing these people. And that's when it becomes a, a big um, protest against clowns. So, you know, they're about to call in everyone out around to see if any of the, the dressed-up clowns out there are actually the ones responsible for the murders. But they weren't involved because they weren't really there. Also, funding had to cut um, Shuttered through the social service program. So that means he won't be able to get any medication at all. And if that wasn't enough, um, Arthur's comedy show goes completely poorly because he he couldn't stop laughing uncontrollably and you know, he was trying to perform his act you know coming up with all these uh, crazy jokes especially when he was trying to talk about how he hated school as a child but but he has difficult times delivering those jokes um, he also has his uh, talk show host idol that he loves named Murray Franklin, who's played by Robert De Niro, who's basically a Johnny Carson type, as I could see, and this is sort of based on the the, the movie uh, The King of Comedy, which uh, yes, because this is an inspiration to it, you know, because he played Rupert Pumpkin, you know, a guy who who's just, who wants to become a comedian. He got so obsessed with uh, the talk show host that he wants to become an inspiration. But they refused. Um, anyway, he later mocks Arthur by showing clips of him uh, during his uh, comedy act, which then seems to be the biggest problem of them all. Uh, then Arthur suddenly accepts a letter that was written to, by Penny to uh, Thomas Wayne allegedly finding out that Thomas Rain happens to be the son of Arthur. So, he actually berates her by hiding the truth all these years. So, what's he do? He decided to go straight to Wayne Manor. He suddenly uh, tries to talk to uh, Thomas's young son, Bruce. Yes, Bruce Wayne. He's trying to find out about the, the secret the whole time, yeah, while he was performing his act and you know, cheering up um, Bruce. But then he actually flees after having a scuffle with the butler, Alfred uh, Pennyworth, which then follows a visit of two um, police agents of Gotham City to investigate the involvement in the train murders, yes, so. 
And then we learned that Penny is suffering from a stroke and was hospitalized. So hoping that she'll be able to recover sooner or later. After trying to find out the truth. But then at the public event, uh, Arthur confronts Thomas, who, who uh, tells him that Penny is delusional and not his biological, not his uh, biological mother. Uh, just when he was dressed up as a, a bellhop, yeah, just when he was um, dressed up as a feeder usher at a local feeder, yeah, there was already a, a protest um, going up against uh, clowns out there. Um. So at this rate, Thomas did punches him in the face as he begins to laugh. But in denial, Arthur visits the Arkham State Hospital to steal Penny's case file to find out the, tr the truth that, the whole truth and nothing but the truth that Penny actually did adopt Arthur the whole time as a baby and allowed her abusive boyfriend to harm them both. She also allegedly, it also found out that Thomas used his influence to fabricate the adoption and committed her to the asylum to hide their affair completely. And that's where Arthur became completely disillusioned and, and he just suddenly changes his ways. You know, he's becoming more ins insane. He started to become more insane and and nihilistic than ever before. I mean, he did return home to enter Sophie's apartment unannounced, but Sophie tells him to leave, and he did. Goes back, actually kills um, his mother, and then was later invited to um, the Pierre and Murray's show, which will lead to one of the biggest uh, conflicts of them all. More chaos is going to appear and and it's going to be a huge riot that's going to happen. Yeah, just when he dresses up, creating his name Joker, you know, by putting up all the clown makeup and e everything and suits, that's, yes, this is going to be the biggest one of them all. It leads to the biggest twist, too, that we're going to find out by the end of the movie. It was absolutely brilliant. I couldn't believe it. Um, I thought Phoenix really nailed his performance um, even in a whole peculiar state. This is his best performance of the year. They really did an excellent job making Gotham City look more dark, grittyish, giving it a, a 70s New Yorkish feel to it, because seeing that they shot this in New York, along with uh, New Jersey and Newark, so I get that particular setting, and the way we begin to see how the character Arthur Fleck really is, I mean, and his character is basically tragic, no doubt about it, I mean, you definitely feel bad for him because of what we learn about what happens, before he becomes the criminal, as we all know, was that he realized that he's actually living a lie all this time. You know, considering the condition that he had wasn't exactly true at all. He was born with it. And the fact that, you know, his life is just crashing down right beneath his eyes. You know, things are just not going what it seems. So. He just had enough. So that's how he becomes totally insane and nihilistic. I mean, that's the change we had to take. I mean, I mean, sure, you might hate the character later on, but deep down of it, I mean, you know you felt bad for him. So that's the way I saw it. And the way Phoenix portrays the role of the Joker, I had to say... Oh my god, this was really... He's going to be right up there with Jack Nicholson's Joker in Batman from 1989 and Heath Ledger for The Dark Knight in 2008. But I think 
they made a valuable lesson with uh, Jared Leto's uh, performance of the Joker in Suicide Squad, but I didn't mind him as the Joker. I just think he was pretty underrated. I mean, I know people say, you know, he, you know, the way he portrayed him is not exactly what we expected. Like, he's starting to look more like a modernized gangster with grills. Yeah. And tattooed and everything, but... Your actual typical Joker that we know for, but whatever. But sadly, we don't even get enough of him in Suicide Squad, so that's what happened. I mean, of course, the main focus has had to be uh, not other than Harley Quinn, but whatever. Um. But this is the best I can see. But this is the best movie that I've ever seen. Even though, yes, it has a violent and disturbing content. But I love the fact that it did have a connection to the story. I mean, even if they had to do some radical changes with that's based upon. But I guess, you know, the way you had to see the characters, having to see how creepy he looks. How peculiar! I mean, having to, you know, put up the clown makeup and and does that weird smile on his face, and not, not to mention he does that particular uh, famous dance routine that he was doing, especially that scene where after he killed uh, the free businessman, that uh, he went inside to the bathroom and and he starts to do that dance routine that's uh, very memorable that I don't think no one will ever forget and he even does do that dance routine um, during the, the stairwell you know, before he was being chased down by the two cops yeah. just you know getting ready to go straight to the to the Murray Hamilton show for as a guest appearance and and just do his act. No doubt about it. And I gotta say, this must have been pretty tough to play a role like that. Um, as for the cast, um, it was nice to see Robert De Niro playing a, a talk show host as an inspiration to um, Johnny Carson. I mean, of course, dedicated to um, as a homage to the group of pumpkin characters, so I could definitely see what they were going for for Arthur Fleck. Um, which led to the downfall that Arthur was getting. Because um, he was the one that actually inspired him to actually uh, join in to his uh, program, so because he loves um, the performances, even though, yes, he did start mocking him, which was totally unfair. Uh, Zazie Beetz was was excellent as Sophie as a love interest to Arthur. I mean especially when she was doing that uh, reactment yeah, after living in a a very um, dirty apartment you know it's all broken down. I mean when they met at the elevator which it was having some troubles too um, they did the reactment to getting shoot by a gun like this. You know, when they first met, it was like, wow, <laughs> what a reaction! Uh, Francis Conroy, um, very excellent, also very good as Penny. I mean, even though we learned the secret behind her, very caring for her son. Not to mention that Arthur is just trying to take good care of her because, you know, she has a illness that was going around. And they're always going around, and most of the time at night they just watch the TV show, you know, the Murray Hamilton show, you know, together so they can just relax and laugh at all the funny bits that he does. And always has their guests, and uh, there's even a moment where, where it's kind of... Just like the movie The King of Comedy, yes, they, they even show the scene 
where he was uh, trying to do his reactman to like you know doing his uh, like he's he's uh, practicing how to actually enter his show and and try to uh, do his comical act and doing his interviews and stuff you know the way society is being portrayed and how it could be a very violent uh, world that's happening so. and I know it, it's it's hard it, it really is but I could see why people are gonna feel I, I think when people see the film you know they're probably gonna have a cold chill on their spines okay so that's Joker and I give the film five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.